Good evening, um, and thank you for, for, for coming this evening. To, and uh, I hope over the next 15 minutes, uh, we can briefly introduce Walls and Futures, give you a bit of a background of the, the business, where we've come from, uh, what we're about, and where we're heading to. Um, that was a disclaimer before yours. Oh, yeah. uh, uh. Um, Walls and Futures is a real estate investment trust, which is uh, basically we're a property company investing in UK residential property. Uh, there are other REITs out there, but they tend to be, or the great majority are based on or investing in commercial property. We're focusing on social and private rented sectors. And our aim is to deliver a sustainable income for our shareholders uh, with some capital growth. Our long-term plan is to deliver 7 to 9% with a 3 to 4% distribution yield. Um, our management team, uh, headed by me, uh, we've all got a... a a deep understanding of residential property. Um, I started in agency uh, some 15 years ago working for Foxtons in Fulham. Um, I was there for three years. I moved to an investment company in Mayfair, uh, and during the, uh, uh, which we grew from, uh, I think when we started 12 people to about 90, uh, I think it was a 350 million pound business in the end. But unfortunately, the, uh, the buy to let market and the mortgage market uh, decided otherwise. Uh, and, and from that, I founded Walls and Futures, which at the time was just an asset management company, investment company, dealing with our, our high net worth clients who were basically buying investment properties from developers who were having trouble finding uh, cash at that point. But off, off the back of that, um, I've always had a, a, a wanted to, uh, the UK, a lot of investors want to invest in residential property. And most people either do it by themselves. And, and what we wanted to do at that point in time was create a vehicle where rather than use cash or buy it yourself, you could invest using your pension uh, to invest directly into residential property. So we set up a structure uh, and call it the Walls and Futures London Growth Fund in 2011. And that invested in pretty much prime central London, looking at two or three London boroughs where we would buy property, redevelop them, and then rent them out. The success was uh, just under 42% over five years without any gearing, so no debt at all. Uh, which calculates it just a 7.7 uh, annualised return. Um, and from that return, we were going to launch a second fund, um, but we spoke to our existing shareholders and they wanted to stay on board. So we took the decision to restructure. Um, uh, so at the end of uh, 2016, we became a public company. We joined the next exchange uh, in November, um, became a real estate investment trust, and again, the business model remains the same. To invest in residential property, uh, we prefer to develop and build out because we have better margins that way. Um, but our remit increased to, through not only just the private rental sector, but also the social housing sector, and no longer a handful of London boroughs, but looking throughout the UK. And unlike a developer or buying uh, a stock in a house builder, our business is, is predicated on buying something, creating the margin, taking that as value for our shareholders and then renting them out. If it's a fantastic property, why sell? There are two key markets. The private rental sector, um, again, it's probably information that's out there and people bang on about it, but we have a, a growing population. Um, we have uh, more people wanting housing and there's not, not enough being built. So we currently need about 245,000 new homes to be built. But over the last five years, we've only averaged 140,000 per annum. So we keep needing more and we don't build enough. So it's compounding. Um, you've now moved to a situation where you all hear about generation rent. So we actually now have, for the first time, a generation who pretty much probably won't own their own home. Um, they will be renting. Uh, and it, it will become more like a German model where, or European model where lots of people rent homes and they very rarely own them. Um, so that's what we're moving towards. And currently, 20% uh, of the UK population rent, and that's going to be one in four uh, by 2025. But what was quite interesting when we were putting all the kind of data together for, the, uh, for, for, for joining the exchange um, was that the Savills estimate that the buy to let market in the UK is worth about 1.2, 1.3 trillion. Sounds like a crazy number. But 89% of that is in the hands of individuals. So there's a massive move 
uh, and, and we've seen from various pieces of government change uh, legislation to institutionalize that. And more and more now, there are companies and big investment funds. Um, I forget, the, I think MNG or Aviv, I think it's MNG have a, a, a fund which focuses on residential property, but the minimum buy in is 3 million. So it's an institution only product. Um, so buy to let, I think, is changing. Um, it's now significantly more expensive. So stamp duty has gone up. And if you already own a property, you pay stamp duty and then you pay stamp duty again. Uh, and what we're seeing, and it's probably going to be very interesting, is the mortgage interest relief will be disappearing. So that's going to be quite expensive for investors. So how do you get access to what is, in principle, a really fantastic asset class, which is pretty much always full and people always pay their rent? Unlike commercial property, where you can see high streets fall apart, um, there's a big shift in commercial property from high streets to big boxes, Amazon and the rest of it, that's where the market's going. So how do we get access to that? Um, and I'll talk about that more. The other sector, which, to be frank, we'll be focusing more over the next coming years, will be the social housing sector. Um, it's well reported that there is more and more pressure on uh, local authorities to deliver housing, but that changed dramatically. Local authorities used to be the biggest house builders in the country, um, but it was slowly privatised. We had housing associations which took on local authority stock, uh, and then you had right to buy, so then that disappeared out of the housing stock. So affordable rents doesn't really exist. Um, and the biggest challenge is local authorities and housing associations who are, used to be able to tap into government grants from the HCA no longer have that money. So what they lack in capital to invest in housing, they actually have in the form of cash flows to pay rents, which is where companies like us can step in to provide that capital to build that housing. And then off the back of that is lease it back to local authorities and housing associations on long term contracts. Very similar to you have in a commercial property sense, self, self in, uh, uh, insuring, self repairing lease with rents indexed to CPI. So that's one of the key markets that we'll be focusing over the coming years. Social housing is divided into three. We've got general needs, supported, and extra care. General needs is, uh, I guess it's targeting the, uh, an example really is homelessness. It's a massive issue, especially in London. Uh, and what, we, what we've actually seen throughout the, local, throughout the country is um, you tend to find big London boroughs, i.e. Westminster, have a housing problem. Uh, and, and homelessness is one of the few things that where uh, local authorities and government, has a st there is a statutory requirement to house people. They have to, by law, put you in a house. Um, but what happens is if you can no longer afford in your local borough to put someone up, if you're, for example, in Westminster, a very expensive borough to rent, you now either put, pay for it there or you export it. So you'll go out of London. So perhaps we've moved to Luton. Now, Luton has a problem because it can't afford to compete with Westminster. So West, they now push it further out. And it keeps on pushing out and keep on pushing out to the point where it's not uncommon for local authorities to be putting people uh, uh, that need housing in hotels, 70, 80, 90 pounds a night. This is actually happening. So what we're providing people uh, at local authorities is a solution where they can have housing significantly less than they're paying now and deal with their problems. Supported housing is the next market that we're looking at, uh, and that's housing for people, uh, uh, basically vulnerable people. They might have learning, physical disabilities, or mental health needs. And finally, extra care, which is housing, sometimes with care and support for the over 55. So those are three key sectors that we'll be focusing on. In the immediate term, our, our real goal and what we're doing at the moment is supported housing. Why? Supported housing has a huge need. There's 125,000 people that require housing now that, are, that need it. And that, off that, there's a shortfall of nearly 16,000. That's as of 25, 2016. And the need is growing. So we're almost doubling over the next two or three years and pretty much tripling uh, by 24, 25. And, and, and the reason for this is, uh, for this whole move of why there's this big push towards supported housing and supported living, it, it comes off a, a, piece of leg, a, a piece of work by the government called Transforming Care. And that comes out of the Winterbourne View Review, where it was found that people uh, were basically being abused, hurt, and offered really poor care in big institutions. So there's a move now that people don't need to be in these big hospitals, uh, big institutions. They need to have, live independently with care or in smaller groups. So this is a massive push by the government and every local authority is out there pushing this and trying to fix this problem. But again, key issues, they can't. They haven't got the cash. We do. And that's where we're investing. We offer a turnkey solutions to local authorities, housing associations and care providers to deliver the product. The rents are higher, so for us, uh, um, it's, it's a better marketplace to be than the private rented sector. 
Um, they are also more secure. We're not dealing with uh, six-month, 12-month tenancies. We're almost looking at the very same way you look at a commercial deal, 15 years, 25 years. So it's a long-term secure income stream. The delivery is immediate, and what I mean by that is we're not looking at saying, right, we're going to buy a piece of land, we're going to go to planning, and we're going to start, uh, we're going to get planning in 12, 24 months if we're lucky, and then we're going to build it, and then we're going to earn income. We can access assets very quickly and actually get them producing income straight away. And for us as a business, it's very scalable insofar as um, there are lots of, it's demand throughout the UK, which is a great thing, so we can spread our portfolio, and there's lots of different price points. So we can target, and we're, we're, we're very busy uh, working with lo local authorities to deliver these, uh, uh, these properties. Um, just finally, before we do a quick Q&A, the key type of investments that we'd be looking at is uh, on the long term, building out, which is what we love to do because we feel there's more value. We can build and control the product, so it's a much better product than it's currently being delivered, and there's more margin for us. Um, the sale and leaseback model is where local authorities or housing associations already have these assets, so we're simply buying that and leasing them back, so it creates capital and uh, frees up cash for them. Um, or directly focusing on a specific need, acquiring an asset, and then we know on the back of acquiring that asset, we already have a tenant for the next 20, 15, 25 years. So those are the key, key sectors that we're looking at. Um, we're going to go straight to Q&A. Oh, perfect timing almost. Um, yeah. Do we have any questions, please, for Joe? Anybody? Gentleman over here. Thank you, Archie. Very nice speech, thank you. Uh, I'd like to know what dividend you pay and uh, what sort of yield is it? Well, we don't pay a dividend just yet. We've literally just joined the market. Um, we expect to be paying our first dividend within the next uh, 18 months or thereabout. And our target dividend, what we're looking to pay out, will be between 3 and 4% uh, as a starting point. Thank you. Any other questions? Um, could you talk me through then, in terms of the developments that you have on the books already? So I assume there's a time lag between starting a development and then having the tenants in or, or, or the income coming to you. Do you have already um, any projects that you've kind of started that work on? Or are they well, we, we already have a portfolio of property in central in, in, in uh, London already. So we have units, uh, two apartments in Southfields. We've got a house in Wimbledon Park. So we have a London portfolio that's let, that's generating an income. Okay. And we're very busy in the, in the process at the moment of uh, putting together a, 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 well, we're working. Okay. Um, and then the developments you talked about, the supported housing. Yep. Um, with the properties themselves. Yep. Um, kind of get, getting access to the capital. Do, do, do you feel as though the scale that you need to generate an, a meaningful return, do you have the capital required, or do you need to do, do you use leverage to buy or, or to invest? Well, everything or? we've done at the moment has been without debt. Um, I'm quite a risk averse. I don't like debt. Um, and our, our key role is to generate as much income as possible. So uh, pushing a lot of debt, there will at some point be some debt within there. Mm -hmm. um, but as it stands now, we have sufficient capital to make a few investments, um, uh, which we'll, you know, we're working on right now. Uh, and then the answer, what we'd like to do is come back to, uh, our, well, we've already been supported by our existing shareholders and we'd look to ex in increase our shareholder base um, to keep on, uh, well, to invest only on the basis of having a pipeline of investments behind it. And again, the investment types that we're looking at, they're not speculative insofar as we're going to buy this or build this and hope there's going to be an end user. Um, we're only going to be making acquisitions where we already have a contract in place. So anything we invest in, okay. we know is already pre-let. Okay. So that's it. So, that's a, so it's not speculative. Uh, uh, we hope it will get. Every deal that we do will have a predetermined number at the beginning. Okay. Any other questions, please? Right, one final one. Um, and that's, I think there's probably a reasonable number of people here in the room who have got buy-to-let properties, maybe one, may, may, maybe several. And everyone's got an opinion on the future of house prices and property prices in general in the UK. And some people, I think, are more optimistic than others. I think there's quite a lot of pessimism or concern that we might be at a top for property prices. Yeah. Um, in terms of explaining why you're not necessarily correlated to that, or what, why the, your proposition, I should sell my buy to less and buy shares, or, or have that as part of my portfolio, um, it, it, it can wrap that up for me. Well, well Walls and Futures, is if from, from a long term, where do we want to be in the next uh, 10, 15, 20 years? I really want to make sure that we're trying to position Walls and Futures to be the alternative to buy to let. Don't do it yourself. Invest in our share. 
because what we're going to give you is an underlying strong capital base uh, using residential property, and we're all about generating income. As far as uh, if you already have a buy-to-let property, uh, or where do I think the market's going, um, I think it's been interesting. Central London's had a very, very good run of it over the last five, six years. Um, we've already seen the market push back. Uh, and there's, especially in the new build sector, there's a lot being delivered. So that will suppress price growth in the short term uh, and possibly ripple out. As far as what property prices do, to a certain extent, then for us as a business, it's neither here nor there. Obviously, we'd like, uh, when, when markets fall, we, we, we invest more and there's bigger opportunities. We're about yield. Um, and for us as a business, we've, we've never been about just buying something to rent it out. We've always been about adding value. If we've bought something uh, for uh, half a million and invested 200,000, it's now worth 700, uh, 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 a million pounds. Mm. Well, we've got an inbuilt real margin. Uh, we've got real equity. But if the market comes back, we haven't lost any money um, in real terms. But what we're about is generating income. So okay. it's, if you're looking for income, That's then... Th th this is what we're trying to do. We're not about capital growth, and uh, with rates of where they are, and I think they'll be there for some time, um, where else do you put your money? Very nice. And residential yields, especially in London, are pretty low, so, uh, but we'll be looking to deliver a, a good return for everybody. Joe, thank you very much indeed. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you.